after the trade works. I didn't see quite how it happened. Yeah, that's exactly right. But there is still one more of this bout of Fire versus Ice. CS's top lane, Smurf, is going to be taking on Dumbledore. Of course, the Turkish support himself. He got a haircut, but he's still the glorious man that we know him as. And he's trying to make it a clean sweep here for Turkey. Love me some Dumbledore. All right, let's see what type of cheese he's got ready to go, because he's the type of guy who will just bust out a poppy support, a bard support. He'll oh, yeah. just go in. ADC, what's that? I'm off to mid lane. I'm going to go jungle. <laughs> I'm going to go the enemy base. I'm Dumbledore. I don't care. Smurf, on the other hand, very strong player in his own right. We saw what he could do at World. He's just a good player. Yeah, and if you're thinking about Tom Kench here as well, as I am, because he's been a certain focus for this particular game, uh, like, he can go in both the top lane and the bottom lane. We saw it already this tournament that Evie, you know, one of his favorite champions, the Tom Kench, pulls it out towards the top side of the map, just, just destroys people with it. Tom Kench, fantastic support as well. And both of these players, notably, certainly able to hop on that guy. So it should ban it. Yeah, probably. I'm probably going to see the uh, Tam Kench ban just because of what we've seen so far in yep. this series. I mean, even I would. Like, even if I didn't respect the Tam Kench, just seeing it take down my teammates is enough for me to ban that one away. So uh, there we go. First ban. Straight away. The Tam They're Kench. going on monologue about Tam Kench and immediately just removed. So definitely a good idea. Cannon going to be taken off the board as well. Not going to be pulling any Elwyn shenanigans. And none of this uh, Caitlyn Mirror from last game as well as she's going to be banned. Ezreal Karma here on the side of the CIS. TK. Misfortune's done. Nasus snuck through. This could be CIS's opportunity. We saw Nasus do some pretty disgusting things earlier on. And LeBlanc is now going to be hovered at least by Dumbledore, who's still considering what he wants to do. So this is how the team talk went behind stage. We were 4-0 down. We've lost the best of nine. Yep. Um, pick Nasus, be boring. Just try and get us a win on the board. Pick the Doge pick into the, the Doge. Doge. Pretty much, yeah. Um, because Nasus, he seems like an interesting pick, but his goal in life is just to E constantly, push the wave, yep. buy a couple Durant rings, and then if your opponent gets frustrated with their lives, then he kills you. Yeah. Because he just withers and ults you, and that's, that's, the, game, that's the game over. So that that's precisely what, what MNRL did. did. Yeah. Uh, and it works with his opponent. Okay. Yeah. LeBlanc does have windows of kill pressure, um, just being an assassin in general, but he may just get ground down. Well, this is the thing. The war of attrition potentially to be on the side of the Nasus, but things have changed for LeBlanc. Of course, assassin changes are certainly upon us, and she has a heck of a lot more wave clear, so the Nasus will need to try a lot harder to farm underneath that turret. And Spirit Fire isn't exactly the best tool when you're unable to completely destroy that back line straight away and you're underneath the turret because that tower is just going to mow them down. You're going to miss all of that farm and that war of attrition like we were talking about is certainly in the hands of the LeBlanc. All right, Atlas, look at me. I am the play-by-play -play now. Mm -hmm. Your predictions for this game. Who do you think is going to take this one home, just based off your knowledge? All right, based on my knowledge, Turkey has won the last four 1v1s, and I have a feeling they're probably going to do it again. Dumbledore also a fantastic player in his own right. My money is certainly on the Doge. And uh, I guess it would be on the Doge, regardless of which side of the uh, Howling Abyss I was on, due to the fact that there's a Susan. The it's almost a cop-out. Yeah, I think so too. I'm probably just going to have to give it to Smurf, based on the fact that he's playing the boring auto-win champion. That is <laughs> Nasus. Um. <laughs> but look at his face as well. He's just having a giggle while he's just got his boombox out. This is what you do. He's the type of guy who probably gets frustrated sometimes. It's like, you know what I'm going to play? Ignite goes Darius top lane. I'm not going to ruin someone's day. <laughs> and I'm going go to go back to being good and play Fiora and stuff. But yeah. for that one game, I'm going to mm -hmm. ruin someone. And I'm going to hope that that guy has only one, only time to play one game. You know, he's just got back from school. I want to play one happy game of League of Legends. Wanna and then I'm going to go out. Yeah. But no, he's against a ghost Ignite Darius top. And that's not fun. It really is not. It's a good analogy. Dumbledore just seeing whether he can change that. Spirit Fire is once again going to come out. Oh, look at that, the power of look the, the look Thunder the Lords. Just terrifying. Another Q. Dumbledore theoretically winning at this point. Can't quite proc his sigil just yet. Yeah, so if anyone hasn't seen it, the, the play for Nasus is he pretty much outpushes anyone else. I actually don't think there's anyone else who outpushes the Nasus other than maybe Velkos. Uh, but Velkos is just a hard champion, so if your name is not Seros, then you probably won't just pick him. So the alternative is just to just pray to God you can get it all in onto Smurf. But Smurf, he's trying his damnedest just to hit minions for his passive lifesteal, and he'll just eat the wave. 
Um, and Donald Doge will have to try and set up the wave to CS it under tower. Which is difficult, but he is doing a fairly good job. This tower isn't targeting the wrong minions. There it is. Donald Doge just gives up on that one, says, I just don't even care. Going to eat both of his potions. Look to see whether he can out-pressure Smurf now. Another Spirit Fire under the wave. Dumbledore avoids the damage. There's one button that he doesn't have. The Shatter Orb was there with the distortion. Gets the proc. Smurf just levels up. Now level three. It just doesn't look like he's taking all that much damage. Remember, Siphoning Strike's going to give him a bunch of health back as well. Just doesn't seem too worried. Picks up a health back. Good chain by the Doge. I've got to stop saying that because there's two. There's two. There is two. But Dumbo Doge was walking the Doctor, walking him back to spawn. And Smurf or Yeah, just do Smurfing. Double Durance, that's what you do. Yeah, just um, get another ring. If you like it, put two rings on it, I think Beyonce <laughs> said. <laughs> that's, that's the saying. Yeah. And he'll come back to lane. He's got the mana regen now, which just amplifies um, his pushing potential. And the douchebaggery that is Natsus <laughs> in this 1v1. I think that's where the word douchebaggery came from. Yeah. Is people that played Nasus in 1v1s. I believe so. That so there is we are. Origin, origin story. story for everyone. Exactly right. Spirit Fire in there. Seismic Strike helping him with an auto reset for clearing out these minions. Smurf, you have no excuse to miss these last hits. Come He's on, on, man. Five out of six currently. Stack it up. Right. We're playing for late game. 50 minute 1v1. <laughs> That's the great thing about Nasus uh, when you play this playstyle, because you don't really even need to last hit with Q. Your goal is to max E and just ruin someone's day. Uh, Dumbo Doge, I want to auto attack you, but I'm withered because yeah. I just got point and clicked. Well, Dumbo Doge decided not to go for another ring. Grabs himself a book instead. So, trying to invest. Get himself towards something like Fiendish Codex, potentially. Smurf not going to get that one procced. Okay, Double Doge is playing this well. He got uh, a couple good trades off, which forced Smurf back, so he couldn't approach the minion wave. Then he got priority on the minion wave and is now forcing it into tower. Smurf returns by taking the health pack, so he's healthy enough to challenge, pushes the minion wave into tower, preventing the freeze. And Double Doge um, in a slightly less good position than he was a, a little bit ago, just because of the way that the melee minions are coming in. Oh no, this is that chain. I've been strong, but. Double Doge is getting a lot of good trades off. If he can put Smurf in kill range, which is at this level, maybe around 40, 30%, where he can just all in him with the Ignite, uh, then it's an instant kill. Smurf is aware of this and will go back. What is very, very important to look for here as well is the fact that Smurf is behind in experience. Double Doge will be able to get the jump on him with this minion wave as well. So level six for a LeBlanc gives her a massive boost in the damage of her combo with that Mimic. So Smurf does have to be very, very careful in that window. Of course, does have the exhaust, does have the barrier. If things go wrong, no level six to be gained just yet and misses the d distortion damage. Withers there, Spiritfire was doing work and Smurf just going to walk at the LeBlanc. Shadow Orb goes down, but this is very dangerous. Exhaust's traded. Ignite's still there. Oh my oh, god, there oh, it is! First Blood with a massive Spirit Fire and Ice on the board in game five. Now four to one. We can't say clean sweep for Turkey this time as Smurf gets some of the.